part 50. Weapons come in all shapes and sizes. A gun is normally used at a distance. A bat, hammer or knife is used at a close distance. The difference between these kinds of attack is that guns are usually more detached from the victim and used from a distance, whereas bats, hammers and knives are very personal. It requires a high level of intimate violence for someone to use a knife on another person. They need to get close. They need to premeditate this intention and they are very clear about the end result. A person with a knife is very dangerous. Someone pulling a knife on another person usually tends not to have good intentions in mind. The body is fragile. Sadly, not everyone really knows this as they should. The last six parts of this series is dedicated to knife defense skills and techniques. These skills cannot be learned from a video in a class type of environment, nor can they be learned academically. No one watching this should rely on being able to do this in a dangerous situation. The best thing to do in this situation is to get away safely if it's possible. But if you're trapped in a corner, you may not have any other choice. Often when a knife is drawn, it's at a close distance or it's a surprise attack. As soon as he thrusts a knife towards my midsection, I get out of the way while using my right hand to divert the knife by stroking the outside of his arm. This allows me to place my hand on the back of his without delay. My other arm is placed on the inside of his arm on the elbow joint. I place it here to unlock his tendons. Once pulled back, the knife will be facing them. My hand pushes towards the abdomen. There's a lot going on, so let's see this again in more detail. He stands in front of me with the knife in his hand. It could easily be concealed behind him. I'm not too concerned yet because he's out of range. But as soon as he takes a step, I know it's coming and fast. One way to know which part of the body the knife will be thrust towards is the angle of the attacker's waist, the counterbalance of their arm and the dipping of their head. The first thing I do is move to the side as I make a hollow in my abdomen by arching my lower back. This is done to create additional working space. Those few inches can make a big difference. While this is happening, my right arm is whipped around his forearm from above. As soon as my arm makes contact with his, I stroke the outside of his forearm gently. As this is happening, my left hand is directed towards his elbow joint. The reason for stroking his arm gently is to help him comfortably extend his arm to reduce the chance of him suddenly retracting it. Guiding the arm here must be done perfectly. If the attacker retracts, it will cause serious lacerations to the victim's arm and give the attacker the chance to repeatedly stab. I turn my right hand around and place it on the back of his. My left hand is now used to deactivate the tendons in his elbow joint. This will fold the arm. My right arm is extended towards his body. This technique can only be done in one way and exactly as shown. If the speed is not accurately matched, we get stabbed. If the attacker's hand is not stroked correctly, they will retract and slice our arm. If the tendons are not deactivated in the right way, 
the attacker will retract and rethrust the knife. There is no room for error. If you enjoy this video, please click the like button, consider subscribing, leave a comment, and if you know someone that can find this useful, please share it with them. Until next time, when we speak, our voice should be pleasing to others, because our words can injure the soul like a cut from a sharp knife.